Hi everybody, good to see you. So today we're going to be doing some more cosplay related content. I'm going to be showing you guys um, how to uh, contour your face to make it look a bit more masculine for when you're doing crossplay, whereas if you're a female, trying to look like a male character. This stuff can also apply to men who want to have more masculine features. So if you're around, like, if you're have a more feminine structure to your face, or you just wish that your the features that you have that are masculine popped more. So this general contouring that would work just to make any face more masculine. Um, I have never really used this in my personal experience at doing male cosplay because I don't usually, up till this point, I haven't done too many cosplays where the character is male. Um, so, and one of the main ones I do that's male has a full face paint anyway, so it's a little different. But I personally do want to get more into uh, cosplaying male characters. So I've been watching some videos and tutorials on how that works. So today will be my first real attempt at doing it, and I figure let's do this together. Let's learn together as a, as a, as a family. <laughs> I'm also going to quickly show you guys how to put your hair up for when you're wearing a wig, because by the end of this video I'm going to put on the full cosplay. So first thing I have to do is put my hair up, then once my hair is up and out of the way, I have to wash my face. If you have moisturizers, you should put on some moisturizer and let that soak in. Once the moisturizer is all soaked in, then you want to put down um, foundation or concealer depending on your skin type and what's going on with your skin. Um, you might want to do partial coverage or full coverage. So like partial coverage would be like if you only put the stuff on certain areas of your face that might be like say you have a breakout or uh, for some reason certain parts of your face the skin is just uh, darker color than others or vice versa and you just want to smooth out your overall tone of your face color. Um, this is because you want to give yourself a, a smooth base um, before putting on the contouring makeup. So we're going to put up our hair first. Then we're gonna get our, we're gonna wash our face and put on our um, lotion. Obviously, you won't see that part. And then put on your base coverage makeup, whether it's um, foundation or just general uh, acne coverage, some kind of coverage to like even out whatever your to get your canvas looking the, its best. And then we will do the contouring which is comprised of um, highlights and lowlights. So the highlights are the areas of your face where you want to catch light and the lowlights are the areas of your face that you want to be in shadow for lack of a better way of describing it. So for example um, you can see like there's just looking at my face now the way the light is hitting my face there's certain areas of my face that are brighter um, and certain areas of my face that are darker because they're um, indented, my face is indented in various places. So usually like cheekbones, the tops, highest point of your cheekbone is usually lighter and it casts a shadow. So usually we do highlights and then lowlights in that kind of framework. And then you, once you put on the highlights and the lowlights, then you blend it all out. To give you that overall effect. And then you put on your cosplay and your wig. So that's the general um, way you get a cosplay together. As far as the actual getting ready process, you want to first you put up your hair. If you're wearing a wig, obviously. If you're wearing a wig, you want to put your hair up in your wig cap. Then you want to do your makeup. Then you want to put on your cosplay outfit then your wig. Wigs are always last, um, except unless you have, obviously, 
uh, parts of a cosplay that go on over hair, then you put the wig on and then those pieces, but generally speaking, you put on, you put up your hair, put on your face, put on your clothes, then put on your wig, is the general structure of getting ready as a cosplay. Because if you do that out of order, uh, there could be some problems. So, for example, you don't want to put on makeup after your clothes because sometimes, depending on what the makeup is, it can get on your clothes. Um, same thing with your wig. You don't want to have your wig on when you're doing your makeup because the wig might cover parts of your face or, or when you're doing the makeup you might get the makeup in the wig hair, which would not be that great. Um, and same thing with putting on the clothes at, before the wig because especially if you have more of an intricate hairstyle, it's going to be more difficult to close on around that without messing it up. So that's just general structure of how that works and how I will proceed with things. Um, last thing I want to say is if you're doing a masculine cosplay and you want to physically look a bit more masculine, um, if you are female, um, is to wear a sports bra or um, they make special clothing that's designed to flatten out the chest and compress them. Um, that's what I have on now. I have on my sports bra underneath a tank top and then I will be wearing a button up shirt over that and then my jacket because I'm going to be wearing my Kyoya outfit. So between the sports bra and the tank top they flatten out pretty well. Um, probably not as well as some of the clothing items that are designed for that, um, but obviously that's something you'd have to look into based off of how often you're doing male cosplays and whether or not you want to um, change your body shape to match that more when you're in your cosplay. So we'll get going on that. <laughs> So first we're going to start with putting our hair up into our wig cap. Alright, so I have my wig cap right here. There's a few varieties of wig caps. Um, some are just of a, a general like stocking material. Others are more of a net. This is more of a net. Um, but still kind of like a stocking texture of material. So. Uh, those are the only two I'm familiar with. I prefer this style because it's a, so this one is a tube. Now they have ones that aren't a tube that are actually a cap so there's no opening at the top, but this one is a tube. These, I th this is, these are the best wig caps. People uh, might have their own opinion, but I feel like this is the best one. So, it's a tube, it has a stronger, it has elastic at the base, this is the part that will go across your forehead, and the way you put these on is way better than trying to put on the cap ones because you can just take it like this. All right, so you got your rubber band at the base here. Take it like this, put it over your head down to your neck. Okay, pull your hair up. So now you have it where this sock or the band is here and then the rest of it is above it, okay? And then while it's there is when you put your hair up, okay? So I have two methods of how I put my hair up. I have my intricate method and I have my lazy method. I'm going to show you the lazy one first because it's quick. So I first, let me take off my glasses because they get in the way when you're trying to do this. So with your fingers or a brush, if you want to use a brush, pull your hair all the way back, especially if your hair is long enough to do this, obviously. If your hair is shorter, too short to do this, you have a completely different method of how to um, do your get your hair into your wig cap. It's, your life is easy. So I first purl it all the way back into a, I'm going to turn this way a little bit, okay, so you can kind of see it, um, into a, a, pony, a low ponytail right at the base of my neck, right? I don't actually use a rubber band because this is not a ponytail that I'm doing. My bangs are trying to escape. 
then I will flip it up like so. Now sometimes when you do that it bub um, the hair over here will pop out so then I just take my thumb scoop it back and press it and I do the same thing on the other side and then using one hand to hold everything in place I take the other hand and I start to pull the wig cap up over my face and then focusing on the back slowly gradually pulling everything up on all sides as much as you can and then gently I'm going to try to tilt towards you so you can see it when pulling it this way you just slowly slide your hand out and then you pull it so it's completely over your hair and you usually bring this down like this here and hold it okay now while you're holding this is when you would pop out your ears if they haven't already popped out on their own see one side did the other side didn't and adjust the band so that it's basically around the base of your hair line as much as possible okay now it might twist it might flip so this is you making it smoother all right and also trying to tuck in any like rogue hairs that might be trying to escape now you can't get everything <laughs> that's impossible now this is my lazy way so usually what I do is I will take one or two small bobby pins and I will just along here to hold this into place into my hair usually one on either side making sure to get some of your hair when you're doing it as well because you want it to stick to your head okay and so then I have these two bobby pins here holding everything into place okay and so that's my quick easy lazy way um, I actually got my hair pretty flat so that's the point is that you want your hair to be flat as flat against your your head as possible you don't want it to be thick and bulky um, obviously certain hair hair types allow that more easily than others so this is my quick and easy way um, it actually works really well when my hair is the length it is because um, when my hair is longer than this it doesn't really work very well because it um, it's too thick that's also why I don't put a ponytail in there because the actual elastic will make it stiff and thick right at the base when you want it to be flat but usually this is good enough and then when I put my wig on over this I will add a few more safety pins to keep the wig in place on my head and so that's basically the quick and easy way to do it uh, the more complicated way I'm uh, I can't do by myself <laughs> that's why it's the more complicated way so the more complicated way is taking strips of your hair hair uh, twisting them and then wrapping them in like a uh, making like a curl like a spiral so wrapping them in wrapping them around themselves to make a spiral that will be sitting flat against your head and then using a safety pin to hold that against your head and then you do that with all of your hair um, that one has uh, its benefits that one I cannot do myself I've tried so many times to do it by myself I usually only do that to my hair when I'm at conventions with my group of friends that I do cosplay with and I end up having to ask my one friend to do it for me and so she'll do the curls and then we'll put the wig cap on over it um, but I cannot do it myself otherwise I would show you <laughs> I just can't um, but yes yeah, so then that covers your head in safety pins you put the wig cap on over it and then you put your wig on over that again you might add a few more safety pins to hold the wig in place um, one of the side effects of that that's nice is that sometimes when you take your hair out afterwards it has more of a curly wave to it um, especially if your hair was like freshly washed or like even ever so slightly damp when you put it up in there um, but obviously like I said it takes a lot more time to do 
and it's a lot easier if you have someone with you doing it. Um, some people can do it themselves. My friend that I asked to do it for me, she does it to her own head all of the time, and her hair is usually longer than mine. So I just, for some reason, can never get it to work when I do it myself. <laughs> the curls will just, nothing will stay. They'll just be like, no. And I'll be like, no, go here, no. So this is my quick and easy way. Um, obviously, I only put two bobby pins in for this point. Um, depending on your hair, you might want to put more in at this point to like hold things down and in place. Um, bobby pins are your friend <laughs> and your godsend when it comes to wigs. So the amount of bobby pins varies on, depending on your hair and the wig that you're using. Also, if your hair is short, um, depending on how long your hair is, if it's really short, like if you have a, a boyish style cut, then you're fine. You just put on a wig cap to flatten it, and you're good. <laughs> uh, if your hair is probably like, if your hair is too long to do a ponytail, but it's like say chin length-ish here, then that would be is probably be a situation where you would take individual strands and um, pin them. Um, that way, that one you could probably just brush your hair back like that, like I did, a, like brush your hair back into like almost a slicked situation, and then just put bobby pins along the edge in the back to hold it in place, and then put the wig cap on. Um, but yeah, so those are some various ways you can put your hair up into a wig cap, and this keeps your gets your hair out of your face, obviously. Um, I always do this first. This is always step one for me when I get ready for a cosplay. I do this and then I do my makeup. So next part will be my makeup. Now I'm going to wash my face and put on some um, lotion and then once that's like set I will move on to the next step which would be um, a base coat and then um, the contouring. Now that my face is washed and moisturizer has been applied. I also put on some chapstick because your lips need to be moisturized too. I am going to now record the rest of this video blind because can't put on makeup while wearing my glasses and uh, that's just the way that's gonna have to be. <laughs> I can't see where am I putting these. Oh, I gotta put them somewhere where I can find them easily because I can't see um, side note, the audio is going to fluctuate a lot because I have my mic, freestanding mic over here, and so the farther away from it I am, the farther away my voice sounds, but I have to lean this way in order to like put the stuff on my face. I'm going to tilt that down a smidge. And so when I'm leaning here, I'm almost right, I'm basically on top of the microphone. So you can hear my voice is louder than when I'm back here. So just going to have to deal with that. That's just how we're going to do this because it's either that or I wear a headset and the headset would get in the way of doing the makeup. So this is what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Moving on. We're moving on. So now that the moisturizer, the, 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 the palette has been cleansed and moisturized, now we have to put on our concealer or um, base coat, whatever the f words, you guys, words. I actually have three options that I have um, over the years I've picked up various things. Um, so this is the first one I have. It's, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Anyway, the brands don't matter, but I have three. <laughs> um, this one is older. This is my oldest one. This is the one I've had for the, long, for the longest time. Uh, is a, kind of a concealer, um, but it also has stuff on it that's, be, that's good for acne. And then I have... Uh, this is a liquid, by the way. Then I have this one, which is a stick. So, it's, I mean, it's still technically, it's a cream, right? Cream. I think that's the word if you want. There's liquid, cream, and powder when it comes to makeup of any kind. So, I have the liquid one. This is a cream one. It's a stick that you just 
draw on. Um, this one I I got because <laughs> I was getting tired of using the wet this one because it's harder to apply. Um, at least it used to be. I have better tools now than I once did, but I got this because this was easier. I was like, I could just go because I mostly will use it for the dark circles under my eyes and occasionally to cover up outbreaks. That's mainly how I would use this one. And then I have this one that I got as a gift, which is the closest thing to my skin tone I've ever found. These two are pretty close. They're good. They're good. They all work. All three of these work color-wise. They are slightly different shades, but they work well enough. But this one is almost exactly what you're... I'm like, what? I am pale and I am white. I have... Really? This? You f I, it exists? <laughs> but this is also a liquid one, so it's the same kind of consistency as this one. So, I have these three options, <laughs> um, which I tested on my arm. It's washed it off now, but here's the picture I took. Uh, I decided to go with this one because my skin is being mean to me. I'm breaking out a little more today than I usually do. So I'm going to use this one that's got acne uh, stuff in it to help out with acne. Also, because this is the oldest of the three, I kind of want to use this up and get and throw it out because makeup technically does expire. You can still use expired makeup, but the older the makeup is, the more likely it is to give you breakouts, clog your pores, and just after you take it off, have some bad skin um, reactions to it. Also, um, sometimes the application of it cha varies because as it gets older, it might get you know dry out or get chunkier depending on what type of makeup it is. So it's best um, to not keep makeup for longer than like a year, maybe two, depending on what it is. Um, just because of that and also especially th with some with certain applicators, uh, a lot of bacteria can get into them, which adds to the possibility of you getting, you know, breakouts and especially like eyeliner, you might get an eye infection, stuff like that. So that's just a, a little tip. Um, I think it's technically a year, but the way most people like I use makeup, it's, it's unrealistic. That is unrealistic. So two, three years is how long I keep my stuff because I don't use certain things a lot. I usually don't do makeup unless I'm doing cosplay or I'm going to a fancy event. So like I don't not really want to do every like day to day makeup. So for me it's not as realistic as it might be for other people. But yeah, so we're gonna put this on. Um, I have recently purchased a bunch of applicators. These little guys. They're um, if you've ever bought lip gloss, it's the same kind of uh, thing that that comes in certain lip glosses. Uh, I bought a pack of these <laughs> because I've been working on more cosplays that involve me putting on various types of makeup. So I've been trying to cultivate my collection of what type of makeup I have and also applicators to which to put on makeup. So I have this, I also have some brushes that I'm working on figuring all that out. So this um, would w is going to work really well for applying this concealer stuff, um, I think. So it'll make up for the usual messy way in which I have in the past put on said makeup. So we're gonna. Oh, let me put this back. Keynote. Sorry, did I shake this? All right. Um, similar with paint liquid makeup you need to shake before you use it so just like with just like with the paint um, that I talked about in the other video you shake makeup that's liquid because you want it to not you want it, everything to be mi well mixed and nothing to like slow like there's there's particles in makeup just like there's particles in paint that can settle to the bottom and affect the way it looks when you apply it so shake 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 Shake, 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 shake your makeup. Shake your makeup. There. I'm a dork. Y'all know this. Have we met? Cause. <laughs>
Alright, so with, with this, I'm not really going to do a full coverage. I think I'm just going to touch up my problem areas, um, places that have acne and my darker circles, stuff like that, um, because I don't think I really need a full covered face. Um, you can do that, uh, but also keep in mind, depending if you put too much of this on, it can make it look like it can make it look fake. You don't want like you you for our purposes, we're trying to look naturally masculine, not like a sh sheet full of makeup on our face. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna put this on my face now. to get the lighting right it's kind of difficult <laughs> um, so that you can actually see I think it'll be easier when I do the contouring for you to see the difference but you can kind of see how like this side of my face is already look a little more smoothed out and bright as opposed to this side you can see the shadow under my eye a bit more um, so basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do under the eyes and the chin. Okay, so as you can see, I put the concealer under both of my eyes, a little bit in the corners and on the either side of the eye up. Um, I did it around my chin area because that's where I get a lot of acne and then a couple of key spots on my cheeks where there is also some acne. Now, the last thing I want to do with this before I move on to the next step is I'm going to put some of this on my lips. Um, I'm doing this because my lips are fairly um, rosy. I don't know. Um, and as far as m well, some men have their lips are closer to the color of their skin than women are, generally speaking. There's exceptions, obviously, but men d tend to, their lips don't tend to have such a, a, um, a rosy or red coloring to it. Also, we're also doing a anime character, and they definitely don't have any color in their lips for the male characters. So, um, my lips aren't that much darker than my skin, but they are just enough where I feel like it's noticeable. So I'm going to go over my lip this go over my lips with this to make it look a little bit more matte to the rest of my skin. So as you can see, um, my okay camera I'm reacting to light weirdly for some reason. Um, but you can see, as you can see, my lips are now blended more into the color of the rest of my face so that will allow them to not look as feminine um, color wise uh, you'll see in the shading there's a few other things we're gonna do with my lips but um, this mats out the skin tone so they don't pop the way women's lips tend to pop so now that we have our base um, coverage on to cover up any imperfections and generally balance out the base tone of our face. Now we have to put in our contouring, which is made up of highlights of highlights and lowlights. So I you could do it either way. You could do highlights first and then low lights or low lights and highlights. I prefer doing um, low lights first because I feel like at least with the highlights you might be able to cover up any mistakes you make with the darker color as opposed to vice versa I don't know I just want to do the darker color first so I don't actually own any makeup that is specifically designed for contouring because there is there's um, makeup you can buy that says contour on it I don't own any of that 
but I do own things that are the same colors, just not the same material. Because I know um, cons um, contouring makeup can come in uh, liquid uh, cream. I don't know. I think powder too, just like every makeup comes in three forms. Um, so I have these two colors here. Um, this one is uh, technically a dark brown blush, and this one is a dark brown uh, eyeshadow, right? Oh, Christ. Uh, Christ, okay. Um, yeah, this is blush, and this is eyeshadow. So, I have these two. Um, the eyeshadow is darker, uh, no? Yeah. Kind of, I think the eyeshadow is slightly darker than the blush is. Um, so I'm going to use the blush, uh, eyeshadow, I think. I was I tested them both on my arm, and I actually tested them on my hand. I contoured my hand for just cuz to test out the colors. I did it on my hand. Um, here's a picture of that. And so both of these worked pretty well, depending on how much I got onto the surface area. Um, the downside of these, and uh, the, the color I'll be using for my highlight, is they're not technically m designed to be contouring makeup, and they have a slight sparkle to them. Not an intense sparkle, but like when I'm done, my face might look like I have glitter on as well. Just. Just, just so you know, contouring makeup doesn't usually have sparkles in it. I didn't. It doesn't look like these have sparkles in it because I look at them, and I'm like, there's no sparkle. But when I put it on my skin, there was like a little bit of sparkle in it. And I was like, what the? Where did that come from? Fairy snuck in when I wasn't looking. What? But whatever. So we're gonna use this. Do our contouring, and I have a little brush here that I'm going to use. I could use my fingers, but I figured the brush might be easier, especially because I'm going to be switching between different things. And have like have to use a different finger for each. It's good. It would be a lot. It would be a lot. It'd be a lot. Okay, so let's do this, and we're going to want to do a um, little bit of a. We're start. Wait, we're going to start back near the hairline, and we're going to go down a little bit here, so um, here, and then down, that's a little high, so like here, and then down, like just under, if you can feel where your cheekbone is, you want the, you want the darker contour to be just under where that is, because your highlight is going to be your cheekbone, um, to help you, like, if you're a little more round, like I am. Um, to help you see where those lines are a bit better, you can suck in your cheeks. Mm -hmm. um, now, generally speaking, depending on your facial structure, um, you might want to go tilt that the line that's going to come out. Uh, usually, uh, from the tutorials I've seen and the images is you come straight out to like about here. I can't see what I'm doing. My fingers are crooked. Okay. So you come from the hairline straight out and um, a lot of them show a little bit of an up. So you come down slightly to the cheekbone and then straight out underneath it to about um, kind of middle. My head is tilted weird. Face to a camera straight woman. Anyway, so you want to bring the line out to about halfway, your halfway point of your eyes, if that helps you um, vi vi visualize. Why can't I do anything straight? My head seems like it's tilted. My fingers are tilted. I don't. I don't know guys. So you want to bring the line, as I was saying, bring the line from back, the base of your, the base here, 
out straight and stop about middle of where your eyes are. So the bleh, midline of your eye. Okay. I had to do this side twice because I messed up the first time, but they're pretty close to the same now. Okay, symmetry-ish. Alright, so that's done. The next thing you want to do is the jawline. So, you want to follow your jawbone. So you start here, uh, you connect it. So you start from where your cheek line is and go straight down till you reach the end of your jaw and then make a right angle um, as you follow so like here the, the here back here you're going to create a, a corner so like a right 90 degree angle here but then follow your jawline and do the same thing on both sides okay So the jaw thing is done as best as I can do it because it's really hard to do this corner part. The back of your jaw is kind of difficult because you can't really see it so you're kind of trying to look and feel it out at the same time. So it's not as square as I would like it to be on either side but it's, it's enough to help with what we're doing. Let me, let me get a little darker over here. Okay. And this is to, and again, we're accentuating our jaw, our jaw line. Okay. Um, another thing is around the lips. We're going to do a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. We're going to do just here under the bottom lip and the line here the in between your bow on for your top so it's very small very should be very quick to do that um, next usually next is your nose so what we want to do is we want to do either side of the bridge of our nose and even maybe in the crease around our nostrils okay now we don't want to make the bridge of your nose look too small so you don't want to you want to go for the exact edge um, along the bridge of your nose, okay? Uh, obviously, this is a place where if you want to make your nose look smaller, you can make it look smaller, or if you want it to look a little bigger, you can make it look a little bigger depending on how far you put the lines. I think my nose is fine the way it is. I feel like my nose is actually pretty gender neutral nose, if I do say so. So I'm just going to follow the natural lines in my nose, but just make it so it pops more when that, the makeup is done. So we want to start up at the brow line, just well, just under the brow, and move down along the side of the nose. And you want to keep going straight. do the same thing on the other side. And you'll see a lot of people make a little U at the bottom connecting the two lines. So that it kind of looks like this. And then if you want to, you can put just a little bit, a little uh, bit in the creases on the sides of your nostrils, which I think I am going to do. I mean, go big or go home, right? <laughs> so then, um, 
you'll see uh, some do uh, some contouring around the around the eye as well and the temple and the forehead now I'm not gonna do contouring on my forehead I feel like my forehead is fine also if you're cosplaying a character that has bangs you don't really have to do makeup to your forehead if it's gonna be covered like a little bit but not that much if it's gonna be covered so I'm just gonna do the temples it's a, a little uh, like that. Uh, you want kind of a triangle-ish shape, like obviously mine's not a triangle, but like the kind of a sort of a triangle shape to it um, where it goes in t the closer it gets to your eye. It's wider near your hairline but smaller towards your eye. And again you want to I mean, you can feel where your temple is, so if your temples aren't symmetrical, that's fine. But you want to kind of have try for symmetry, but like, also, you just want them to look as close to each other as possible. You want them to look like sisters, not twins. And when it comes to the eye contouring, you'll see a little bit darker in this corner underneath your eye, and then on the opposite corner above your eye, you'll see a little bit of a shadow. Um, obviously some people make them bigger than others and uh, depending on your character maybe your character has more sunken in eyes so you'll want to make put more shadow around your eyes but that's based off of who you're if you're uh, who the person is that you're doing this to look like so I'm going to do the bare minimum also because I'll be wearing my glasses so glasses also conceal a lot of things that so you don't have to try as hard in that area so we're just going to do a little in the corners. It should look like this. Light adjust. Okay, thank you. Okay. And um, you will see people do different things to their eyebrows to make them more masculine. Um, I feel like my eyebrows are already pretty good, so I'm not going to do much to them. Um, I might just add a little bit of color at the end to thicken it up. That might be the only thing. I'm, that's the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this on my eyebrows to make them look a little, little bit darker. My eyebrows are already pretty dark, and they're also pretty straight. So if your eyebrows are more curved, you want to make them look more straight. Some people completely cover their eyebrows and just draw on new ones, which you can do. I've never done that, so I can't tell you how to do it. <laughs> um, Whereas it, I know it involves gluing down the hair and covering it up with a base with the concealer and so that it's blank basically, but beyond that I can't help you. So I'm just going to add a little bit here at the base of either side. Um, when I washed my face, I technically also brushed my eyebrows because they are thick. So um, what I did was I brushed them down and then out to try to make them look more masculine like because uh, men's eyebrows tend to be closer lower to their eyes there tends to be less space between them and their eye and they also tend to be more of a straight line as opposed to women's who are curved up and back which then makes them look farther away from the eye I have my dad's brow line so convenient for what I'm doing <laughs> um, some people will also contour around uh, the underneath and above the eyebrow to make them stand out more as being masculine. So this is basically it. Obviously like I said some people do uh, contour their forehead and usually what that entails is just uh, a general line down the middle of it. Some people will put a dark either a solid dark line across their entire forehead, not their entire forehead, but basically from, um, what is this called? The two spots where you feel, you, generally speaking, people have a flat area that's the middle of their, their forehead, this area. So you'll see 
either one line in between these, sometimes you'll see multiple lines um, with the low lights. Sometimes people just use highlights and let their natural color be the low light, not their skin, regular skin be the low light. Those are multiple ways you can do it. Like I said, I'm not going to do anything to my forehead because it's fine. I think my forehead is fine. Also, the wig I'm going to put on has bangs, so it doesn't really make sense to do that. I just did this. T the, what, what I did is to shape my face, which is what you're going to see. Next up, we are going to do the highlights of uh, the contouring. Again, I don't have the technical highlight makeup, so I'm going to be using a color um, from one of my... Uh, I think this is blush. Is this blush? No, this is... Uh, Okay, I don't remember if this is blush or eyeshadow or not, so, ooh, ooh. but yeah, so I'm going to be using this color here, because it's the only color I have that kind of works as a highlight. Um, if only this one wasn't so gold. <laughs> Alright. So, like I said before, highlights are where the areas of your face that you want to draw attention to because they catch light. Um, so you're going to be putting that usually above where the shadow is. So whatever part of your face, of your structure is causing the shadow. For example, so we're going to be doing above, we're going to follow this line that we did and do above it. And then we're also going to go on the inside here and follow along the jawline above where we did on the jawline and then also obviously here on the chin and then with the uh, mouth we're going to do either side of the shadows so we'll do this area first and then we'll move on to the next step next you're going to want to do the nose so the entire brit this entire middle bridge the entire bridge of your nose you're going to highlight basically And then on the outside area of where you put your shadows and then over to the cheekbone just like a little L and then lastly you want to do under the brow but only over in the corner here it's basically accentuating the place where I put a little more of my brow in so as you can kind of see, obviously lighting is an issue here, um, that's all you would do except for obviously if you were doing stuff to your brow. So I just put a little bit of highlight underneath my eyebrows in either corner, on the outside and the bridge of my nose, along the, at where my actual cheekbone is above the line, and then along part, part what partial a long part of the bottom jaw line and then uh, between the jaw line shadow and the lip shadow put it a little bit and then on either side of the shadow in your bow of your lip okay and so that's all of the highlights and the lots you would need obviously you can't see it as well as you might with actual uh, highlighter makeup Oh, because this is technically just a little real light shade of eye shadow, but um, I feel like hopefully that'll be enough to like balance it out. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Except so we put on all of the contouring. Now what we have to do is blend it all out. Are you ready? We will now blend it out. Now it's the time where we blend this into our face so it doesn't look like, you know, lines that we drew on our face. Now we want to blend it together, fade it out so it looks like high light and shadow is hitting our face.
how you put on a wig, by the way. You want to obviously face find the front and the middle of the wigs, face it forward like so. And then you want to tilt it down. My fingers are at the back of the wig. And you want to place the front of the wig against your forehead. So you place the front of the wig against your forehead and pull the back over the back. Alright. And then once it's on your head, you can adjust it. Wiggle it around until it's where it's supposed to be. Most wigs come with these um, hooks that are meant to uh, help secure the wig to your head, but depending on the wig, you may not need to use them. So if they stick out, make sure you tuck them up in if you're not using them. For this wig, for me, I don't need them because this wig stays is small is uh, small enough that it sticks to my head fine without them. Also, short hair wigs don't shift as much as if this was a longer wig. If this was a longer wig, I would almost definitely be using the full, using that to keep it in place. Okay, so I think the back's pretty good. And then, obviously, Style it a bit, and I'm gonna of course be using the net, the hair, as using it to help conceal my sideburns. Oh, I feel a piece of hair escaped, but whatever. So I'm gonna keep shifting this until I get it where I want it. Do I look more masculine? I think so. Now, I don't think this worked 100%. There's a lot of problems happening here. <laughs> there are some spots where you can still kind of see the lines as lines, and other spots where when I blended it, it seemed like it just disappeared. So, there's that as a problem. But then again, I was using eyeshadows instead of actual contouring makeup. So, I feel like given what I, given that I've never done this before, actually, and given the materials I used, I think it came out pretty good. It did add some degree of uh, angle, angular masculineness to my face. Definitely, I see it. Um, but just not as flawlessly as it probably would be if I was using the right material. But it came out good, I think. So, and those are the basic techniques you need to know how to, in order to do contouring. And then basically from there, it's just tweaking it to fit your face better, to make to see what works better for your face. So, one of the things that I think I'm gonna tweak for next time is I feel like I put the jawline shadow a smidge too low. I need to bring it up just a little bit. Um, also, I might next time do two lines on either side. Either do one line in the center of my chin to, to give you that more of a dimple, because I do have a slight one, to give more of a dimple in the, uh, a cleft, to make it look more like a cleft. Um, also, you can also contour your neck to make it look more masculine, which basically amounts to uh, more shadow along the underside of your chin, and then uh, highlighting and shadow along this 
center part of your neck um, to make your neck pop more, make that part of your neck pop more, and to give an illusion of an Adam's apple. I saw a few of those debated doing it. I was like, I don't think I really need to. So we're not going there. There's also for situations where you're going to be showing your um, uh, clavicle. There's ways to shadow that to make it more masculine as well. So that's contouring and also how to put on a wig. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if there's any other cosplay related things you would like me to do little videos and tutorials on. And I will see you guys in the future. Bye!